Good evening. My name is Tom. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ who's powerless over drugs and alcohol and sex and smoke, all sorts of stuff. But today, by His grace, I can choose recovery. It's good to be with you here on a Friday night. I needed this meeting tonight. I hope you did too. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. We ask you to use this time together. Use this time together. Draw hearts and minds closer to you. Draw each and every one of us into a greater willingness, into a more willing heart, a more willing attitude, so that truly we can seek your will and live your will to a world who desperately needs to see your love and grace. I ask this in the name of your son. Amen. Author and theologian C.S. Lewis said that people don't need to be taught so much as they need to be reminded. And I believe that statement is true, especially around here and not for just, just for those of us who have gray hair. Because I was taught early in recovery that we've got built-in forgetters. Anybody got a built-in forgetter out there? Yeah, we forget stuff, the basic stuff. We forget it all the time. And a couple of weeks ago, on Friday night, Pastor Sherry shared an amazing, tremendous lesson on grace. I hope you were here, and I, or I hope you watched it online. If you didn't, you should be able to find it on, pay, on a Facebook page. I just love it when we talk about grace here at Grace, don't you? How many love grace? Yeah, we love grace. You see, she reminded me that God was there even when I was far away from him and trying and succeeding to ruin my life totally. God was there not judging, but trying to bring me back to himself by his love and his grace shown in a hundred ways that I didn't either see or I refused to see. God was there with love and grace when I finally admitted defeat and I started to allow God to bring me into sobriety. God was there in the detox with the gift of hope and power for a hopeless, powerless alcoholic. And God has been there every step of the way since, giving me yet more hope and more power, guidance and grace and direction. And it is all through God's grace, given because, God, because of God's love, because we've all heard it. God is love. Amen? Oh, yeah, something. God is love. And I hope, if you heard that lesson, she reminded you of some of those same things and maybe a great deal more. It was a tremendous lesson. But she reminded me that the words of the Apostle Paul ring so very true. And it's on the screen. And it's these words. It, is, it goes like this. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works that, so that no one can boast. And that is Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 9. You see, Sherry reminded me that it is God who has provided everything I need, not only to stay sober, but even to become a follower of His Son, Jesus Christ. In tonight's lesson, I'm going to continue reminding. This is also a reminder. It is a reminder that even though I am, not was, am powerless over alcohol in and of myself, and even in this powerless condition, I still have one thing I absolutely must provide in order to enjoy this program of recovery. There is one key, if you will, that I have to bring to the program of recovery. It is the one thing that is key not only to starting in recovery, remaining in recovery, but it is a key to all spiritual growth and progress. And willingness is that key. Anybody agree with that? And I got to tell you, I learned this one the hard way. Because you see, when I first started in recovery, I was defeated. I was. 
And I even started going to some meetings, mostly at the detox I had been in. But I re resisted doing some of those basic things that I heard. You know, things like go to lots of meetings, get a sponsor, work the steps, and so on. I was defeated, and I was starting to believe that a higher power of some kind could restore me to sanity. But I was not willing to go to any lengths to stay sober. And as it turned out, I wasn't really willing at all. I did not bring that key of willingness. So when the obsession to drink came along, I had no effective mental defense against the first drink. And that is why my sobriety date is March of 1984, not sometime in the fall of 1983. But in March, I started over. And I chose to become willing to do whatever it took to stay sober, at least as much of it as I could see at that time. Chapter 5 in the book, Alcoholics Anonymous. If you've been around traditional recovery very much at all, you've already heard this. It puts it this way. It says that if you have decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any leak to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. If you are willing to get any, go to any length to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. That word willing. Now, I know that for me, I had seen enough to want what I saw in the rooms of recovery. I saw people who were sober and they were happy about it. and They were living happy, productive lives. I saw people who were willing to go out of their way to help others, even people they didn't hardly know, and that includes me. I saw people that were truly happy, joyous, and free. And because of what I saw there, but also because of the pain of that last drunk, I developed some willingness. And it was enough to get me started. Yet there was still a lesson for me in this. You see, what I had to learn was that willingness does not only come through the pain of our addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. It also can be a choice. You see, it's not just a reaction to the pain we experience. It can be a choice because of the new life we would like to enjoy. Willingness is a choice. And that may well be one of the first things I learned is that willingness is not an impulse. Willingness is not a feeling. And that fact that willingness is a choice came as a shock to yours truly when I first came into recovery. I kind of thought that willingness was something that just kind of happened to you. Anybody ever been like that? You know, it either happens to you. You either have it or you don't have it. You're willing or, well, no, I'm just not. Yet one of the co-founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, a man named Bill Wilson, said this about choosing willingness, and it is on the screen. It's in a letter he wrote. It goes like this. As, alco as active alcoholics, we have lost our ability to choose whether we would drink we were victims of a compulsion which seemed to decree that we must go on to our own destruction. Anybody ever been there for that part of it? And yet, we finally did make the choices that brought about our recovery. We came to believe that alone we were powerless over alcohol. And this was surely a choice and a most difficult one. We came to believe that a higher power could restore us to sanity when we became willing to practice AA's 12 steps. In short, we chose to become willing, and no better choice did we ever make. And I have to believe, and I am convinced, that that same idea that we can choose recovery applies to all area of a recovery, not just over alcohol and drugs. Anything that we have admitted that we were powerless over. How many of you have had admitted you're powerless? Okay. 
we have a choice. Every day we have a choice. And I want to tell you that even if you've listened to any of our amazing teachers from this platform, none of, you, none of them will ever downplay God's grace. But they also will not deny the fact and the importance of our choosing to actively participate in the recovery process no matter what the addictions, afflictions, compulsive behaviors, the hurts, the habits, the ha whatever label we put on this thing we're powerless over, whatever it is, we still need to choose it, to actively participate in the recovery process. And even God, who is the author and the source of the grace that each one of us say we are... By the way, I'm going to stop just for a second. Are you all grateful for grace? You say thank you to God every day for the grace He's given us? Well, if the God, the author of grace that we're so grateful for, gave the freedom to choose... He said these words through uh, Moses, uh, his servant and a prophet. And he said it to a bunch of wayward Israelites. And he said this, This day I call heavens and the earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. How many of us choose life? Isn't that what we're here for? We choose recovery. I think we choose life. That was Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. So tonight I'd like to just make this suggestion that maybe, just maybe, we need to choose to be willing. And that's if you're first starting out. If you're new here, I'm so glad you're here. I really am glad, and you're welcome, whether it's here in this room or online. And you get to choose recovery. You get to choose and make a choice. But some of us have been around here for a while, and sometimes we might, might want to need to revisit or revise that willingness. How many of, how many of us need a, re, a willingness checkup, if you will? I do. You see, the idea of choosing willingness is not in any way limited to the beginning of recovery, but it is woven throughout the program of recovery and the recovered life. Choosing to be willing is a day-to-day, moment-by-moment habit that is an essential part of recovery, both in the beginning and as an ongoing part of our daily lives. And just like anything else, it can be a habit that we take for granted. It can be so automatic we say, oh, I'm willing. But on second thought, maybe not as much as I think. So you see, this reminder isn't just for the folks who are just starting the recovery process. It is, but for all of us who have adopted this way of life as recovery every day of our lives. And the authors of the book Alcoholics Anonymous, what we call the big book, knew that to be true. And that is why they cautioned us with this statement that appears as part of the tenth step in the book Alcoholics Anonymous. It's a little bit long, but bear with me. It is easy to let up on a spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels. We are headed for trouble if we do. For alcohol is a subtle foe. And I'm going to add in, so is food, so is sex, so are drugs, so all the other stuff. They're subtle foes. We are not cured of alcoholism. What we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. Every day is a day when we must carry the vision of God's will into our daily, into our activities. How can I best serve thee? Thy will not mine, be done. These are thoughts which must go with us constantly, and we can exercise our willpower along this line. All we wish is the proper use of our will. Page 85, Alcoholics Anonymous. And as I've said a couple of times already, and I re can't reemphasize this, yeah, it was written by Alcoholics Anonymous, 
for alcoholics, but it is true for all of us who are in recovery using the 12-step program. And I can tell you from my own personal experience that in my own life, there have been times in recovery that I have, quote, rested on my laurels, got careless or lazy or complacent. And inevitably, I wound up making some of the absolute worst decisions of my life. And it wasn't always just laziness or complacency. Sometimes I allowed the things in life, both the good and the bad, to distract me to where I started neglecting my spiritual condition. And while I never drank over these lapses, I have done some foolish and harmful things that hurt myself and hurt other people. And yet, even in those times, God used my failures to bring me closer to himself and to his son, Jesus Christ, and also to draw me deeper into recovery. I am here in recovery and choose recovery because of God's grace working through those situations. You see, God used these lapses ultimately to lead me to this recovery ministry to face my sexual addiction and, more importantly, into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I was sober quite a long time when that occurred. I was not a new guy. So it can happen at any time. And I am certain that if I had continued to lapse in my willingness to surrender my will to God, my lapse could have well been a complete relapse. And maybe that's why we include the Bible verse following the 10th step that goes like this. You're familiar with it. You can read it with me if you want. It says, so, if you are, think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. And that is just so true for me. Today, I choose recovery from alcohol, sexual addiction. I have not made the cho choice to face some other things yet. I wasn't quite willing, and I, that's a choice I need to make. But it is by God's grace that I can choose to recover. But if I choose to recover, and I choose recovery, and what, by the way, what is the name on our shirt here? Choose recovery. Yeah, that's not an accident, by the way, guys. then if I choose recovery, then I can, and I would say must, embrace the essentials of recovery that we read just a little while ago. And if I embrace them, then I must be willing to put them into action. There's that word willing again. And the five essentials are, you know them, they're on the screen, Jesus, meetings, 12 steps, Sponsor and service. Now, I'm not suggesting that we do this all at once. Okay, I'm willing, totally and complete, completely willing right at this minute to do everything I've just heard. Twelve steps and everything. Although some people may start out that way. But we start where we are. And if you're new or just beginning recovery or just starting in the steps or whatever, wherever you are or been doing this a long time and maybe you need to kind of revisit, restart, or refresh, start where you are. For those who start out going great guns and just roar, God bless you. The sponsor might well have to slow you down a little bit. But others of us choose enough willingness to take the next step or the next meeting, or for some of us, just be willing to get a sponsor, do the basics. Some of us have to trust as much of Jesus as we understand with as much of our lives as we know. You see, some of us may not throw ourselves wholeheartedly both feet into service, but we can only 
manage small and reasonable acts of service, but each one of those are indications of willingness. We do what we can, provided we're willing and we choose to be willing. You see, the point is that no matter where you are spiritually or in the process of recovery, you can choose to be willing to do the next thing in front of you. And that's why the sponsorship is so, so important. That's why uh, accountability partners are so important and so critical because they can get to know you well enough at least to help you decide what the next thing is. Because this stuff can be kind of confusing. But to make the next step, we choose to be willing to do the next thing in front of us. And our sponsors, accountability partners, can help us figure out what that is. And by the way, did you know that getting to know people and letting people get to know you, that's willingness. It is a choice. I need to wrap this up. And I want to land this with the why. And there's two points I'd like to make on that. You see, we choose to be willing not just to avoid the pain of the past, which, yes, we do, but so that we can experience, experience the promises of the future that start to show themselves as we begin to choose willingness at greater and greater levels. And I'm not talking about just the promises that we read around here periodically or the nine-step promises that you occasionally hear at a traditional meeting. But I'm talking about all of the promises that are woven both through the recovery liter literature, the 12 and 12, the big book, those books, whether it's NAACA, whatever the literature is, not just those but also the promises that are woven in every one of the steps and God's Word, the Bible. And the promises that we are given because through a relationship with Jesus, the very Son of God. You see, that's why we choose to be willing to grow in our willingness so that we can live the life that God promises how many of you are a little tired of the life that you promised yourself? How many of it didn't work out so good? Right. That's why when I started hearing these, pro these other promises, I started to develop some willingness. So I want to, that's the why. But there is a takeaway question. And this isn't one I'm going to ask you, and maybe you should ask yourself maybe in the privacy of your time alone, ask yourself, am I as willing to go to any length as I need to be? Will I choose to be willing to take the next step, whatever that is, so that I continue to grow into the person God intends me to be? And that's your takeaway question. I can tell you how many times I've said, oh, I'm willing. I even wrote it on my first four-step inventory. I'm willing. I have discovered that in some cases I was very much willing. In some cases, I need to grow a little along those lines. And that is the purpose of these lessons, is to remind us that even something as simple as willingness is an ongoing growth process. So ask yourself this question, am I willing to choose willingness? <laughs> Please stand, and I want to close with a prayer, and if the band could come back up, that would be great. <coughs> Father, I pray that each and every one of us discover that by being willing to trust you more, we can grow in willingness to serve you and our brothers and sisters, to grow more in the likeness of your Son, who demonstrated his willingness by giving his life for us on a cross 
in an act of profound and unimaginable love. And in his name, I ask for that increased willingness. And all in agreement said, amen. This time at CR, we, we open this time the altar to ask ourselves questions, and maybe to take these questions about willingness and all these things, take them to God, get some of God, God's answers. So we open the altar. There are three places on either side that you can come and kneel and pray if you like, or your seat where you stand can, or can be your own altar. Of course, people will be here to wipe these down after each person. We do ask that you be mindful of social distancing. So uh, please come. Please come and bring this willingness question to God. <laughs> 